Hello everyone, in this video we're going bog trotting up a hill in the dark in Scotland all to get to a point that I found on Google Earth and I'm going to take you through that Google Earth process and then of course we're going to shoot the image for real. So this is an approach I use from time to time and hopefully you'll find it useful. Well, good morning everybody and welcome to this viewpoint looking towards Anchelloc in the northwest highlands of Scotland. I'm going to get into the photography in a minute but before I do that I thought I would talk about how I found this location and how we ended up in this exact point. So first I'm going to whisk you back to my computer and we'll go through Google Earth uh, and then I'll talk about how I wandered around this scene to find the spot that I'm stood in now. I'm sure many of you are already familiar with Google Earth, but for those who aren't, it's essentially a 3D model of the world with photographic overlays. It's pretty easy to fly around mountain landscapes in particular and, and look for different arrangements of peaks. And actually I've been using Google Earth now for, for as long as I've been a photographer, uh, trying to find different perspectives um, on, the, on the mountains of Scotland in particular, but also in some of the international areas that, that I visit. Um, so this is the, uh, the mountain that, uh, that I'm choosing here. This is Anchelloc. Um, it's uh, an area on the northern end of uh, the Fisherfield Mountains, just a little bit south of Ullapool, which you can see just there. Um, and uh, it's, it's certainly an iconic mountain in Scotland, uh, particularly with this east-facing facing Corrie in here with the, the little lochan down there. Um, that's certainly the most dramatic portion of the mountain and the, the Corrig Buddha pinnacles which, which are up here. So that's what I was interested in photographing and I've explored some of these uh, lower areas before and been all over the mountain before. Uh, but I was interested in, in getting uh, a shot from beneath the mountain looking up at the crags. And initially I thought I'd come out to these mountains all the way up at the back here. This is the, the Ben Jerrig area. Um, but I decided uh, for this sunrise to look for somewhere a bit closer and just in flying around these eastern aspects you can see there's a lot of little lochans high up on, on the hills here but this particular one looked both large and interesting in terms of its shape you can see these lovely um, winding lines which if I could somehow find a way of incorporating them into a foreground or, or midground with the mountain in the back um, obviously had the potential to produce a nice photograph. Um, of course, one critical thing you need if you're going to photograph down onto a lock is some height above it uh, in the correct spot. And this lock and also has that in the form of this little hill just here. So what you can do is click this little man and, and drag him down onto the, the hillside here. And uh, that puts you on the surface of the earth, so to speak, and, and then you can see the kind of view that you have. You can see the ground does drop off to the right here. Um, and I do want to go off to the right in this case because I want to align these features here with this crag behind as much as possible. But this is as far as I take it usually on Google Earth because quite honestly, you really have to go there to see if there's the potential that you can see on a computer. Um, and the actual accuracy of the uh, of the mapping and, and the photographs and, and the, particularly the height um, of the local area isn't quite accurate enough that you can exactly plan a shot, but this is definitely enough to be getting on with. So with the magic of video editing here we are on top of the hill again and you can see very similar to Google Earth that the Lochan is indeed off to the right relative to the mountain and that's particularly the case if I introduce a crop based on where the mountains are to, to sit them nicely within the frame you can see a lot of that Lochan actually ends up out of the frame entirely. So quite clearly what we have to do here is walk to the right and hopefully maintain our height but unfortunately we couldn't do that because of course the hill ran out so we ended up walking backwards away from the, the lock and around the hill to keep our height but of course as we did that our view over the lock and became shallower so we started to lose some of the lovely shapes in the lock and but that was a necessary compromise and ultimately to get closer to the lock and 
and uh, to, to get further right still we actually needed to descend down the hill uh, to a lower viewpoint just to arrange everything within the frame but nevertheless I think that position we ended up in was the best spot that we found that morning despite its compromises um, but just to uh, stress myself out I did record a, a video with my drone which shows what the higher shot uh, would look like and of course uh, that that is better um, but I generally think that uh, photos are better taken from the ground so uh, I'm quite happy with the compromise that we had to make and uh, I think the scene that we photographed was really lovely anyway. Okay let's talk about how we're going to shoot this scene because sunrise isn't far away although actually it doesn't look too likely to happen uh, just this second there looks like there might be a band of cloud on the eastern horizon um, but obviously we're going to hang around and see what happens here but in terms of shooting the scene here I've obviously set this up on Google Earth with a mind to using the Lochen here as the mid-ground interest and the base of the mountain range so the composition is essentially already planned out um, now that I've actually got here I think there is also a tighter view so if I flip the camera around I'll talk about that so the framing for the panorama works out pretty well like you see here so I am just clipping off the left hand side of the Lochen uh, because I think this set of mountains fits together much better than if I included more uh, width there I think that's a bit unnecessary and it also starts to create a bit of imbalance so certainly just coming in fairly tight on these mountains but obviously I've walked to this position to align all of the interest in the Lochen in front of the main structure of the mountain and that's where the tighter view is and we actually have a nice pinkish cloud drifting overhead at the moment so I'm going to jump straight to my photo of that scene. Five minutes later the sun started to strike the top of the mountain and that's when I took this photo and Chelloch really is an absolute gem in Scotland and uh, I'm sure that I will be photographing it more over the next 18 months or so. Um, so keep an eye out for this famous mountain uh, on, on this YouTube channel. Uh, but this narrower view that I was so enthusiastic about, actually I don't think it does work in this particular case just because of the positioning of the cloud and the space that it creates on the right hand side of the sky. I think it makes it um, a bit unbalanced. And often you're looking for that kind of imbalance in a landscape photograph, but in this particular case with the subjects spread relatively evenly across the frame, I think it looks a little bit awkward and the much wider view is better because it allows space to exist on both sides of the cloud and the fact that there's a slightly different amount of space doesn't really matter that much it feels very nicely balanced by comparison um, so I think it's this wider view that uh, that is the stronger composition and a later version of it is probably my favorite uh, of the two because the uh, the sunlight striking some of those red grasses beneath the mountain I think that adds an extra dimension to it even though the color in the clouds isn't that lovely pink anymore so a really nice um, photo a nice nice result um, from from the planning on Google Earth and it's always enjoyable actually to, to plan something digitally and then come out and, and have it realized um, that said I would love to have had slightly clearer conditions um, maybe a slightly more interesting sky even because it is uh, a simple shot I think it puts uh, more demands on what I'd be looking for from the conditions and I'm just thinking what it might be like for example on a perfectly still morning with a reflection there in the lock and some nice clouds above it could be something really special but still um, this this may well end up in my portfolio all the same although I may go and reshoot it so I'm not sure um, but I actually finished the day shooting a time lapse and then ran out of memory because I'm a bit out of practice shooting time lapse actually and I forgot to check my memory card before I started shooting so here's a little five second time lapse to round it off um, but if you would like to support the channel then please do subscribe and, and share I'm really trying to, to grow this channel but it is challenging so your help is really appreciated